Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. It's such a beautiful Sunday morning. We're glad you're here at home watching the streaming uh, services. We're going to start right now with our opening chant, The Light of God. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God unfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God unfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Well, good morning. And welcome. We're glad to see you. I am Reverend Sydney. I'm the assistant minister here at North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So I want to welcome you if you are in the room. And I want to welcome all of our live streamers, our Zoomers, our Facebookers. And we are so glad that you've joined us as well. So if you're in the room, please check your cell phones and make sure that they're on stun. And if you're at home, you can do whatever you want with your cell phones. And um, what else do I want to say? Oh, we are masking because this is our social contract so that we can keep each other well and healthy. So thank you for playing along. We have some lovely parting gifts for you later. <laughs> and right now, let's go ahead and pray, shall we? So we just take this time to turn within, breathing in a deep, deep awareness of the infinite loving power and presence, which is God that spirit which surrounds and fills everything and defines and divines everything and everyone. So I know for each of us that as we acknowledge, recognize, and celebrate this presence, that we participate in it. So I know that we are not just one of and one as that infinite loving God, but we are one with each other. And how glorious it is to come together this day to celebrate to truly, truly celebrate the divine that we are. And I know that this service is already a fantastic, radiant, dazzling idea in the mind, the heart, and the loving presence that is God. And so Dr. Mark is open and receptive and speaks what needs to be said, and we hear what we need to hear and how glorious that is. So I also know that the music is lifting us up and revealing those ways in which we are strong, in which we are part of that divine, infinite, wonderful, wonderful love that God is. It absolutely is a joy to be here, and we live as that joyful demonstration of God. So I bless all of us, and I know that whether we have come to serve or be of service, that this day... We are truly, truly blessed. I release this word into spiritual law, knowing it is already so, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Be still. Thank you. 
Would you please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So if you will remain standing, we're going to sing our congregational song today, Joy and Peace in My Heart. Joy and peace in my heart. seated. So we are going to join together in spiritual practice for the next five minutes and meditate. So I invite you to simply empty your hands and relax, feet on the floor, allow that chair to support you and be where your body is. Be aware of your breath and if your mind wanders, as it will, bless it, let it come back. And I want to suggest that you silently repeat, repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am. And just allow yourself to settle into that divine silence and I will bring us out in five minutes.
I'm not my story, I'm not my song, I'm seeking glory my whole life long, been on my own since I was born, a badge of less than I have worn. I've fallen down, I bled my knees, stumbled on life's mediocrities, wordless without a prayer, or so I thought, the battles that I've won I never fought, I'm not my story. Not my song, been seeking glory my whole life long. Been on my own since I was born, a badge of less than I have worn. Been judging you as much as me. Seeking surrender, haven't found the key. Beaten, bad, and broken, living blue. Can I forgive myself and see the truth? I'm not my story. I'm not my song. Been seeking glory my whole life long. Been on my own since I was born, a badge of less than I have worn. Bless this evolution, conscious contribution. Is love, is love, is love, is love Oh, bless this evolution Conscious contribution Only one solution Is love Is love, is love, is love.
Yes. Wonderful. All right, good morning. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're with us in person or virtually, we are happy to be together. Uh, my topic this morning is enlighten up. I'm not sure what I was thinking when I came up with that, but it sounded good at the time. No, but, but seriously, uh, in the East, uh, Eastern traditions are very much focused on the goal of enlightenment. And in the Western uh, traditions, you see more uh, people after the experience of illumination, but both really, really involving this idea of, of the light. Now, Ernest Holmes says that God is love, but God is also law. That God is um, eminent and transcendent. Uh, now, Ernest Holmes, to have real transformation, he says you have to have both prayer and meditation. So I know lots of people who are great prayers, and I know other people who love to meditate, and it's not always that they like, there are people who do both. But our teaching is actually the combination of both, because he says to have real transformation, you have to have both a practice of meditation and a practice of prayer. So one of the things Ernest says is that he says that God is love and law. So that love is a presence that we court, and we court that presence through the practice of sitting to meditate. And that God is also law, and law is a principle that we learn to work with intelligently, and the way Holmes teaches us to do that is through doing spiritual mind treatment. So we pray to work the law of mind, and we meditate to court the presence of spirit. Now, there's no doubt about it. In life, what we practice, we get stronger and better at. Isn't that an amazing thing? Now, I have known that probably since I was a little kid. I bet you have too. You know? So in the science of mind today, what we would say is, so what are you practicing? If you practice complaining, oh, isn't that interesting? You'll get really good at complaining, and what you'll notice is the universe gives you a lot more to complain about because that's how it's wired, you know, because what you focus on increases. Um, but if you practice some other skill that you've been desirous to learn, you will, if you stay with it, get better. Right? <clears throat> so if we meditate, we will get better at focus and presence. Right? I think meditation is good for everything. It really is. Um, the important thing is that we do it, however we do it. You know, because literally, when you close your eyes and begin to meditate, your brain emits different brain waves. So something is happening, something different than happens with our conscious mind. You know, so if we meditate, we, we get good at being more present and we understand ourself better, which obviously for us as students of the science of mind is a lifelong understanding. And I think we're more effective at pursuing whatever our own individual spiritual path is. And I know for every person who's here, for every person who practices the science of mind, everybody has their own unique spin on that. So when we meditate, I think we're not trying to escape. See, people have often said to me, uh, their idea of meditation was that I was trying to escape life. And it's actually quite the opposite. We are not trying to escape our life when we close our outer eyes to the outside world. But what we're doing is we're actually bringing the dimension that we touch in meditation, we're bringing that experience into our everyday life. Right? So we all have uh, different stuff going on. You know, for some people right now, it's about health. For some people, it's about mental health. For some people, it's about relationships. For some people, it's about money. You know, so everybody's got stuff going on. I understand completely. But science of mind says, your life connected to God is the answer. Now, how do you know in a way that empowers you that you are connected to God? Of course, it's going to be through having your own individual spiritual practice. You know, and I think that when... I found, I believe that when I found Science of Mind and the practices that Ernest Holmes offers us, it was a game changer for me, you know, because it, it doesn't matter, you know, which, which of the practices, and, and I think all of the practices will help lift us up. They will support us in having our own experience of illumination. They will support us in becoming more enlightened, right? So, so when I found affirmations, I loved affirmations. I still am a big affirmer. I love to affirm. Because I, and, and why that makes sense to me is because I believe we're always affirming something. You know, so I may as well tell the truth and just affirm, say, I, I'd rather affirm something good into my life than something bad. Um, now, I know we, and with so many spiritual practices that we do, um, you know, we pray, we meditate, we affirm, we study, we take class, we work with a practitioner, on and on and on, all these things. At some point, 
people usually stop doing them. And it doesn't matter why you stopped or how you got off course. The important thing is that you get back on course. See, because not expressed, I am probably, I'm probably asking the wrong kinds of questions. Not, if I'm not expressed, I'm probably not asking, uh, I'm probably asking, if I am asking, I'm asking probably for the wrong things, you know? It's, it's such an interesting thing to me that we think we're telling the truth, and there, but, but we have levels of truth, don't we, here on the relative plane of existence, you know? So if I really, really, really tell the truth, boy, things start to open up. Science of mind teaches us to speak our word from the place of the answer. You know, people, people think that when they pray, something's going to be added to them, but science of mind says, no, that is not true at all. So when we speak our word, which is another way of saying when we pray, we have to pray from that place of, I know the answer already exists in the mind of God. So I've been praying a lot lately. I suspect you have too, because there are so many big, big things going on in the world right now. And I humanly, I do not know what the solution is to all of these things. How can I say that? Because my idea of solution is always going to come from the past. Okay, and we've already done that. So that's clearly not going to move us forward. So, so science of mind says, you know, speak my word from the answer. I don't know what it is, but I know that there is already a healing for everything that's happening in the mind of God. I know there is a cure in the mind of God for everything that needs a cure. I know there is fulfillment that everything that needs to be fulfilled in the mind of God. So how do I experience that? Well, I have to speak my word from a place where, all right, if I was healed, how would I feel? If I was abundantly supplied, how would I feel? If I was prosperous, how would I feel? Now, if the world was really a peaceful place where we all got along, how would I feel? You know, so, and so capturing that feeling is what we want to start with, I think, when we pray. If you've been holding on to God and your world is falling apart, then actually we have to flip that around. Uh, we have to say, well, it's, it's obvious that God is holding on to you at this time. So I think what we want to do is we want to make a, co a conscious choice. And what is that choice at this time? So for me, it comes down to just a couple of very simple things that I, I am choosing. I am making a conscious choice right now. I want to stay in love. I want to stay in the best consciousness I can. I want to stay in God. I want to stay in the kingdom regardless of what's going on. Now, if I don't make that choice for myself, on a daily basis, I'm going to be at the. I'm going to be like this little piece of flotsam and jetsam. You know what that? That that's like air lint, and and it's. Just, I'm just going to be batted around by whatever's happening in the world. Oh, this is happening. How awful. Oh, this is happening. Another awful thing. Oh, this. Right, so I have to make a conscious choice. I think as I start my day that I'm going to stay in love. I'm going to stay in this kind of kingdom consciousness, because the truth is I have my being everywhere in God. And so do you. We have our being everywhere in God. I think we want, you know, when I look at things happening in the world, I realize that within myself, I would like what I will say today is the evil in the world to look a certain way. And I realize the reason I want to be able to identify it looking a certain way is so I can say, that's not me. That's not me. See, that's different than me. That's not me. That's them. All right? But when enough people are willing to look the other way, we understand this is how evil things can transpire. But humans can always find a reason why something is more important than loving each other. And I think this is just a fascinating thing. I'd like to see us reverse that 180 degrees, that no matter what people do, humans can always find a reason to love each other. You know, that would be, now I think that would be a movement forward in consciousness. You know, we all know that our thoughts can take us to heaven and can take us to hell. And we're not talking about physical locations. We're talking about places within our own conscious mind. So maybe, you know, we make little compromises with truth on a daily basis. You know what I'm talking about? But basically, if we look at the world right now, the problem is we do not love as much as we possibly could. You know, science of mind says, what is always manifesting is my intention, okay? So it's not enough to say, I didn't intend to harm these people, you know? Uh, to not intend harm is not enough. I think we have to actually intend to put a loving energy out 
into the universe. See, I think we all do it. If I look at this, if I look at this particular issue, it's going to bring up stuff. Uh, stuff that I would rather not see, stuff that I would rather not look at right now, stuff that I don't want to experience right now. But I think we all have to dig deep in here, you know, in our own inner world, if we want to play a bigger game out here in the outer world. You know, because you can't give something you don't have. And I think we go through something, and we go through something, and we go through something, and then we have a level of competency in that area. It's like, okay, I've walked through this, I know how to navigate this now. I know how to navigate this now. You know, it's like, it's always so interesting to me that once we have been through something, I believe that, that God has an incredible capacity to use us to help other people heal in those areas. But only once we're on the other side of that experience. So I know for myself, when, uh, as, a, as a young adult, when I first started to experience loss, that we all do, how I was, having experienced losses close to me, was completely different than I was before, because I had now walked that path in a very, very personal way. So I don't believe that there's any sacrifice in coming to God. I really don't. You know, what makes us, uh, what makes us loved, what makes us feel protected, what makes us feel fulfilled is not outside of us. So, you know, the thing to ask is, God, how can I be used in this situation? Spirit, show me how I can contribute to this situation in a healthy, healing kind of way, right? Because there are probably, not probably, there are definitely <laughs> things that, that are preventing us from experiencing that. Your highest divine self, my highest divine self, already exists. And so if something is covering that up, it, that's, that's, what we, that's what we need to do, is uncover that. This is not um, a weak or vulnerable place, but I think it's actually a place of tremendous power. The, I think we've been conditioned for a very long time to think that something about us is not enough. And that's not true. Just us is absolutely enough. Whatever you do or are called to do, the important thing is the place, and by place I mean the consciousness within you that you do it from, right? Because everything we do carries the energy, it carries the consciousness with which we do it, right? So not everybody, I don't know, I, I, this just hit on me this week, and I think about this, and I'm like, wow, that's right. I remember now reading that not everybody responded positively to Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Not everybody responded positively to Buddha. Not everybody responded positively to other enlightened masters that have been here saying, hey, this is the way. Come on, this way, this way. I'm just holding the light for you. <laughs> uh, you know, the first commandment, I talked about the commandments last week, and the first commandment is to love God with everything you've got, basically. You know, so we're saying, it's important to put God first, not all the other stuff that we put first. See, because we have faith, our teaching is we have faith in God in here, not the things, not the external phenomenon out there. And there's nothing wrong with the external phenomenon. But again, all solutions we teach in Science of Mind already exist in the infinite mind of God. Now, what's it going to take for me to be a person where a solution can be revealed? Or what's it going to take for us to be the people where the solution can be revealed? So um, Dear Abby said this. Remember Dear Abby? I'm really dating myself now, I realize. But I used to love Dear Abby. And Dear Abby said that there are two kinds of people. And she said, they're the ones who walk into the room with, here I am, you know, and that, that type of attitude. And then there are those who walk into the room and say, ah, there you are. See? And the difference is that one of them is, um, I'm here to get, and the other one is, I'm here to give. One of them is, look at me, and the other one is, I see you. Mm -hmm. And so we, under, we understand the, the difference there, because one is about being a contributor to life, to other people, and one is about just yourself, right? So that's small. So human incarnation, I think, is not something to escape from. You know, I, I've often said in my foundation class that, People think that, oh, I got a human incarnation. Well, this one didn't work out so well. I'll just get another one, you know? And it's like, well, maybe or maybe not. We don't know. But I think that this incarnation is not something to escape from. I think that it is about glorifying the light and the life and the intention of God, that my life is to bear witness to the good of God, to the truth. 
So Howard Thurman said that when you surrender your life to God, God places you where you need to be. So I would ask us today, have you surrendered your life to God? If no, well, maybe think about that. But if you have, right, if you have, that would mean that right where you are right now is exactly where God needs you to be. We're in the right place, in the right place. And you think, how can I possibly be in the right place? I'm filled with fear right now. I have fear about so many things. So I was reading um, in the Zen community in America, there was an author who wrote a book called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, Suzuki Roshi. And he was, had, you know, in his lifetime, probably tens of thousands of students, actually. And at the end of his life, he's, he's quite elderly, um, and he's close to dying, and he wanted to take a bath. And his wife said, you know, no, you need to stay in bed. This is really not a good idea, uh, Roshi. I think you should just, just stay in bed, you know? But Suzuki Roshi was able to convince his son to lift him and put him into the tub. But once Suzuki got into the, now this is an enlightened master. Once he got into the bathtub, he started to panic and became filled with fear. Now, that's the story, okay? So he came out of the tub. But I thought, God, here's Suzuki Roshi. He's an enlightened master. He has arrived. He has achieved that, that high place of spiritual summit there, and he was still afraid. <sighs> okay, so if he's afraid, I can acknowledge that sometimes I'm afraid too, that there are things that just scare the bejeepers out of me. And, um, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, so um, someone else, Rilke, said that everything that frightens us at the deepest essence is something helpless that wants our love. <sighs> wow, that just really takes me to my knees because I think I create so many other stories about things that they, uh, people, that they are, they, they are not uh, helpless, wanting love. I make up some other scenario so that I can you know, not give that love. I don't have to show up as a conscious, loving person. I can just stay over here because I say, well, they're the problem, that's the thing. You know, so my hope for us is that we appreciate all the small things. You know, I know there's lots of small things in our life right now, um, and I hope we start with those, and we start appreciating them, and that we love well. If not now, when? See, see, it occurs to me that some people live their life, some people, don't know who they are, but some people, uh, that we think we can avoid heartbreak. You can't, you know? Uh, heartbreak is stitched, it seems to me, and I don't think this is negative, I think this is the path. It seems to me that heartbreak is stitched into everything. You know, that in life you're gonna get your heart broken again and again and again, but that should not be the reason to not love fully and completely, right? See, the thing is, yes, my heart will be broken, you know, um, but I don't have to go through it alone, you know, that we are a community, and as a group, it's, it, it's not mine, it's ours, you know, and, and in the, the container of the group, the container is love, that's it. The container is love, and our heart is the refuge. And so this, again, is why it's so important that we belong, feel like we found place, that we have community. This is my tribe, these are my peeps, however you might articulate that, because I know the path ahead for us is light, not dark, but I also know that we're gonna go through lots of things, and the good thing is if we go through those things as part of a community, we share it. The joy gets shared, but also the seeming difficulty gets shared. But part of being in a community is that we have the support of other wonderful people who are on the journey. And so I know that support will again and again lift us up. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, recognizing that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground that we are surrounded, we are filled with God's infinite loving intelligent spirit, the spirit that is the most true real thing about us. We are emanations of this most high God. Like Jesus said, I and the Father are one. 
So in this awareness of our oneness with God, I further know that we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And I know that we are on a path, a spiritual path, where more light is being revealed within us every day in every conceivable way. I know that the old things that tripped us up or held us back or seemed to keep us limited are no longer here today for us. That in this moment, we are new. We are a new being in spirit right here, right now. And so everything that we need is provided for. So I claim for each and every one of us, we have an enormous amount to be grateful for in our life. And I further claim for each and every one of us that we forgive everyone and everything that needs to be forgiven. Even if we've forgiven them a thousand times, 10,000 times, we do it again and again and again because our desire is to go free, for us to be more free. So we include our prayer, in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. And seeing them in our mind's eye, we see them as whole, complete, perfect emanations of the Most High God. Nothing broken, nothing missing in any way. We let our prayer be a blessing on the earth, touching all these situations that seem so discordant, so chaotic, so out of harmony. And we say God is there as peace, as love, as well-being, as all needs met. For all the families in America that have been so affected by shootings recently, we open our hearts to these people. We open our hearts and let the love from our heart pour out to them so that they might be lifted and comforted and healed and raised up. We pray for the people in the Ukraine and declare peace for them. So I know as within, so without. So because we are peaceful, loving people right here, this is what we see and experience in our world. So with a heart that's full, blessing our church and all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, blessing all of it, I say thank you, God, for us together. I release this word into law, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. So All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Sunshine
so grateful I'm alive at the same time on this planet as you, Jamie Lula. Thank you so much. And all of you. Holy cow. That's wonderful. Thank you. I'm so grateful I'm alive. Okay, you can get his music at jamielula.com. J-A-M-I-L-U-L-A. I got all of it. I love it. It's good. Okay. If this is your first time with us, we are so glad that you were able to join us, whether you are here in the room or visiting us um, as a live streamer. First of all, if you're in the room, we have a present for you. There's a welcome table out there to your left as you leave the building. And it's a packet that has lots of information for you and tell you a little bit about what we do and what's going on and who we are. And if you're live streaming, we don't have that packet for you. But, but you can just keep live streaming and you'll learn a lot, I promise. All right, so we make it easy for you to um, tithe and give your love offerings, make donations to the church. You can text, the, okay, the text to give number is inside your bulletin right down at the bottom. There's also a QR code and you can use that with your phone and just follow the prompts. Uh, you can also go to nhcrs.org uh, slash give. Now we have practitioners who pray and pray and pray and man are they good because they will know the truth about you and for you, especially in those times when you have perhaps forgotten it. So after the service, 
please come forward. We will have some practitioners here to pray with you. They will do their one minute miracles. And if you are on Zoom, if you are on Facebook, you're gonna to have to hop over to Zoom, but on Zoom, there are also practitioners available to pray with you there. Um, Wednesday evening, um, that's not June 1st, that was June 1st. June 8th, let's call it June 8th. My topic will be paint it red. So, yeah, it doesn't make you wonder. Okay, so you have the chance for a spiritual adventure of a lifetime. In October of this year, October 2022, Dr. Mark has taken a group to Japan. And I know, ooh. And so there are still a couple of openings and we hope that you will take a look at that because this is gonna be a wonderful trip and it will be such a spiritual adventure. So visit the website and you can get more information about that. Okay, we have a new class coming up starting tomorrow night. Um, now I'm just gonna read you the press on this, which I wrote, so. <laughs> Our remarkable, Dr. Mark is presenting a remarkable, I do, uh, I do know other words by the way, six week class based on the teaching of a remarkable woman. Emma Curtis Hopkins was and is one of the most profound new thought icons. Her book, Scientific Christian Mental Practice, establishes an absolute and powerful foundation for healing and wholeness in every area of your life. So join Dr. Mark for Scientific Christian Mental Practice Part 1, Mondays, beginning tomorrow from 6.30 to 8 on Zoom only. Cost is $1.50, which is such a good Deal. Oh my gosh, so sign up on the patio or online. You can get the bookstore, sorry, you can get the book in our bookstore or online. Um, so we have an interesting thing happening today. We do this annually. Our women's and men's group are meeting together today, together at 12.30. So the women's group and men's group will be having their yearly unified monthly meeting at 12.30 p.m. <coughs> in the youth church and on Zoom. So you are all welcome. Um, if you were a loved one, could use some enhanced spiritual support, which often we do. We have a pastoral care team ready to help. And you can reach out to our team through our website. Um, Zoom virtual patio before and after our Sunday and Wednesday services. Our Zoom meditation happens every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 to 8.15. And you can go to our website, nhcrs.org, to get more information, get Zoom links, and you can subscribe to our weekly e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. And that's it for me. Mic drop. Let's stand up and sing the, um, what are we singing? The peace song. That's yeah, the one. Let's do something new. Let's do the peace song. <laughs> So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. 
I am living love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so we're there. Here we go.